Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. Hey, this is this just been one week since the last episode. I mean, I know last episode was just like, happy Thanksgiving, we're taking the week off. <laughs> that counts, though. Counts. I mean, it has an official show <laughs> number. We're back on our weekly schedule. And it's like perfect timing because we're at the sprint to the end of Miami Vice. But more on that in a minute. This week, we're talking about Season 5, Episode 10, titled To Have and To Hold. It is also the 100th episode of Miami Vice. Syndication, here we come. Let the payroll, uh-huh. let, let the check just roll in every week i'm just gonna get that usa money (laughs) stop it originally premiered on february 10th 1989 it is written by william conway who was his only episode that he wrote but he's also the teleplay writer for freefall apparently as we've been going through all the writers in this season they're all gonna work on freefall like it's it's literally they're gonna cut out sentences from everyone and pin them up onto a board and see if it makes sense into a story. That's how many writers are involved with freefall. You think that would make it a good episode? <laughs> you think that's the case. <laughs> the director is Eugene Core. This is the only episode and actually the only information about Eugene Core on the internet, so he must be kicked off the lot or something. I think. <laughs> this is <laughs> it. He, he disappears after this. <laughs> Before I get started, I can check in and see what's in each other's eyes. Guys, all in the last like eight episodes, it's been us just talking about things that happened in like late September. So we actually have like, you know, we're up on modern times here and all the things that have happened, um, all that stuff and more. Oh, and that too. Yeah. <laughs> That was crazy when that happened. <laughs> to, to give you guys a little perspective, I have grown an entire homeless person beard and completely shaved it off and started growing another homeless person beard again. <laughs> the amount of time since we last spoke. It's the beard donation program for men who can't grow their own beards. <laughs> Once you get it to a certain length, yes, you can it's, cut it off and then you can donate it. Yes, we, we, we do have to work. You know, there are so many men out there who can't grow decent facial hair. <laughs> Um, they should not, you know, be deprived of the wonder that is a beard. So, <laughs> What I really wanted to spend this moment to talk about is that sprint to the end of the show that I was talking about. Believe it or not, this episode 10, Free Falls episode 17, it's only seven episodes to then. And there's only 21 episodes in the season, the fifth season of Miami Vice. And so we only have 11 more weeks, plus some clip shows and a roundup in the movie. There's only 16 episodes left, and we have covered Vice from beginning to end. Birth to death of Miami Vice, including the um, movie thing afterwards. I read the synopsis on I'm not holding my breath for what that movie's going to be. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah and you're gonna hate crockett in the movie if you like don johnson watching colin farrell is gonna be pretty painful <laughs> <laughs> so what we're asking you pals is one we really appreciate you sticking around with the whole run of the show and we have 16 more episodes coming we haven't decided on what the next step is going to be for us after Miami Vice airs. So it's probably going to be a little bit of a break for us. We'll go on a little bit of a hiatus to do some testing. We'll figure out what it is that we're going to do next. What we really appreciate you to do is to show show that you appreciate the value that we've been giving you. We'd love a little tip or something to keep those servers running, to keep our investments going. And that'd be a great time that if you've loved our show, just to kick us a couple of bucks. You can check out that Patreon. You can go to the website and click on support. You can find a way so that you can send us a little tip. We would really appreciate it to show like, hey, you know what? If you ran into us, would you buy us a beer? Would you buy us a coffee? Or how about this? If you went to a restaurant and they served you a free meal every week, would you still tip the staff? Well, if you're looking at it that way, that we bring you a free meal every single week, why don't you kick us a couple of bucks every time? So we encourage you to go check that out. We'd love to keep this thing going. We'd love to get a little bit deeper, spend a little bit more time, invest in some more hardware and keep those servers running. So speaking of things that are never going to happen, let's take a look at Sonny and Billy's relationship. Yeah. (laughs) Father of the year. (laughs) Let's go break down this week's episode. When we open up, we're at a church. It's a wedding, a fancy Miami wedding. The quantity of white suits seem to indicate that it is also a Miami Vice wedding. Why is the dad sticking his tongue down the bride's throat? <laughs> Turns out that's his bride. That old man married that young, beautiful woman. <laughs> <laughs> Tubbs and Gina are in the crowd, and this is just the first marker on the path of this whole episode. What the hell is Tubbs wearing? I think we should just make that the, the question of the, this episode. What the hell is Tubbs wearing? It's like a, from, I don't know, a, a tuxedo. But... <laughs> <laughs> it's like a tuxedo that somebody put, put 
paint on maybe i don't know like drew on designs i have no idea it looks like a bicycle playing card yes there we go yes better question why do people keep inviting vice to their weddings like it never goes well true story like someone always ends up dead at these weddings maria is the woman that Lu louis is marrying or louis uh, whatever louis louis okay i don't know let's white it up it's louis <laughs> <laughs> Lewis, the old man, and some awesome hockey mask people inside of a van are watching from down the street, too. At the end of the wedding, they come walking out. Ramon comes up and kisses Maria. He is Lewis's son, and now, I guess, Maria is his mom. No. Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Says that his father will like her, a man. And then we also hear that Tubbs is talking about that Lewis and Maria. Maria is like a mail order bride, which is actually kind of interesting that you're like a millionaire mobster, and you have to order a mail order bride. Well, because they, you know, as the 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 owner of the mail order bride company says, these women they know how to how to take orders. Basically, <laughs> they know how to please their men. They don't worry about jobs and and things American women worry about, like going out with their friends and spending money and credit cards. Going to the gym. Going to the gym. I, I am not surprised about the mail order bride part of this because anyone that hangs out with part time bullfighter. Or whatever Rico's trying to be. <laughs> you're, you're clearly into some weird stuff. True. <laughs> Cooper and whatever Gina's undercover name is. Go and congratulate Gina. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> Louis's brother's widow, Lucia, tries to introduce Carlos Jr. to Cooper. And Ramon and Louis are like, yeah, whatever, Shlomo, get lost. Well, I mean, Carlos, Carlos Jr. is his Shlomo for sure. <laughs> He does not fit into the family. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Meanwhile, the hockey mask is watching from a van. Everyone gets into the limo to drive us away. And so the van, uh, I'm going to call it, it's loosely a van. <laughs> it's the weirdest looking so, thing I've ever seen. I don't know. <laughs> it's the weirdest Ninja Turtles ever. <laughs> the armored van, like prisoner escort bus, pulls it up, blocks the limos. A team of people get out of the back of it with semi-automatic guns, start opening fire into all of the limos. The hockey mask wearer comes up to Lewis's window, busts in the window, shoots and kills him. Doesn't kill Maria, but kills Lewis. And then Tubbs gets there just too late and sees that Lewis is dead as, long, as well as basically everyone else in the wedding party. What happened? Did, was Tubbs not able to find parking right away or something? Like, was he that far back in the line? <laughs> I mean, you would think being a, a bullfighter would get you further up in, in line in the cars, you know. And, and how is she still alive? He literally just sticks the gun in the window and just starts firing, you know. Yeah, true. <laughs> like, but, but her husband like, got in front of it, so that's why. You know, bullets don't go through flesh, I guess. Yeah, initially. <laughs> but eventually, you know, when you unload two clips into the, into the limo, like, eventually <laughs> something's going to hit her. That's what I'm saying. Like, shouldn't it have gone through him? Like, don't bullets go through bodies? That's not a thing. Lewis is the worst drug dealer in Miami. Okay, he couldn't get any women. He had to get a mail order bride. And then he's got limos that get easily hijacked while he's leaving his wedding, which everyone knows is your most vulnerable time. So that's when you should have the most bodyguards. And also, his limo isn't bulletproof. Even the man that caressed his cocks had bulletproof cars. <laughs> I think it was because his wedding party was wearing those, like, pink suits. I think that's what did it. Mm -hmm. And you think all of this happened on the day of his daughter's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> And then we go to the opening credits. This is our moment to check in with the guest stars. One of them, I just, you know, he's a big name. I remember him from some movies, and I could have sworn he was in a previous episode of Miami Vice. John, it, it, if I go crazy here? No, you are not. Miguel Ferrer, he played a DA in the episode Death and the Lady. Oh, he swapped uh, We know him in this episode. Home in this episode is Ramon Pendroza. Miguel isn't the only Ferrer in the episode. His real-life brother, Rafael Ferrer, plays Carlos Pendroza Jr. <laughs> so, or the little twerp as we've known him. <laughs> Miguel, I mean, uh, he's been in a bunch of stuff. I know him mostly as the boss from Crossing Jordan. John <laughs> Robocop. <laughs> yeah. Crossing Jordan, for no, the record. No, no, not RoboCop. RoboCop, what are you talking about? <laughs> for the record, Crossing Jordan is the show that makes the most appearances in our podcast episodes. 
compared to any, nothing else. There's no other show, not Nash Bridges, not <laughs> any other show. Crossing Jordan appears the most. <laughs> because somebody's always talking about it. It's not my fault they hired guest stars who happened to be in that wonderful show that didn't last nearly long enough and should be rebooted, NBC. <laughs> He also has had guest appearances in uh, Chips and Cagney and Lacey around this time. His first role was actually Magnum P.I. in 1981. He was also on Twin Peaks. That's not bad. I'm sure he did something so, interesting like put shoes on a horse or something <laughs> in Twin Peaks. Aside from Robocop, he was also in Star Trek Three: Search for Spock. Flashpoint, Traffic, Sunshine State, one of the more recent ones, Iron Man 3. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2017 of cancer. A little more about him. He's uh, the son of actor Jose Ferrer, who's the first Hispanic to win the, an Academy Award for Best Actor. Wow. And his mom is here actress rosemary clooney which would make him cousins with george clooney wow wow brother Raphael was also in the episode he is most no known for marrying singer debbie boone in 1979 and then saw some a little bit of tv work he also did an episode of cagney and lacy not sure if it's the same one <laughs> That'd be hilarious. He just brings his little brother along. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and episode uh, third watch, Law and Order, Law and Order SVU. The only movie credit he has is Girls Night Out, which could be a porn. <laughs> and he also voiced Darth Malak in Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic video game mm -hmm. series. Sweet ass game. Mm -hmm. Nerd. <laughs> okay, so to some of our other guest stars, uh, we have Elpidia Barillo. She plays Maria Pendro Pendroza. Also plays Felicia in our final episode, Freefall. Mm. So, guys, coming back, gonna play uh, Nun this time. The same as the writers, for like all of them essentially worked on Freefall somehow. I'm pretty sure every guest star in season five makes an appearance as somewhat different in Freefall. I, I, my hopes are sky high for Freefall. It's going to be just this. It's going to be chaos. There's people just running around in the background. It's like everyone's reading from seven different scripts. There's 14 <laughs> subplots. <laughs> Pedia mainly appeared in Mexican TV and cinema. Uh, her first appearance in the U.S. was in 1982's The Border. Some of her other movies are Beyond the Limit, Salvador. She was in both Predator and Predator 2. Then her most recent role is in 2009's Mother and Child with Annette Benning and Jimmy Smith. I mean, if Jimmy comes knocking, you don't say no, right? No, you never say no. Yeah, no. <laughs> as far as TV, did episodes uh, 21 Jump Street, ER, the Law and Order and Law and Order SVU complimentary package. That leads us to Mary Lou Rosato, who plays Lucia Pendroza. And she's actually mostly a stage actress. She only has a few film and TV credits. She's got a couple TV movies time of her life and stone pillow she did an episode of carolina in the city she too got in on the law and order svu <laughs> everybody's in those everybody and then as far as real movies like bensonhurst key exchange and the luminata and i cannot guarantee that at least one of those is not a porn <laughs> that brings us to linda montgomery who we've talked about before she's Caroline Crockett Ballard. Why she hyphenates it? She should have just completely got rid of Crockett and just been Caroline Ballard. <laughs> She's a Canadian actress and artist. Um, so, and we've already talked about her a bunch. She goes on to be Doogie Howser's mom, married to Bob, and they live a wonderful life. Yeah, everything's fantastic. Everything's fantastic. And if you're interested, go to BelindaMontgomery.com and you can buy some of her art. Hey, you know what I just realized. We always thought that Billy would, be, would become Doogie Hauser. Turns out Billy's not. He's the older brother. The new baby becomes he is. Doogie Hauser. Yes, of course. <laughs> exactly. The problem, Doogie Hauser was an only child. Doogie's in the child. belly. <laughs> Doogie's an only child. Because <laughs> Billy goes and lives with his dad. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. On uh -huh. a boat. <laughs> well, I mean, come on. I mean, Billy's not exactly the best influence. He's getting in trouble. You, you don't want him around a kid like Doogie. I mean, Doogie's <laughs> going to be something. 
Speaking of Billy or Stevie or Bobby or Spee or whatever they're calling them these days, played by Clayton Barclay Jones, we've talked about before. His only other credited roles are 94's movie version of Lassie. He did two episodes of One Life to Live in 95. He played Timmy on the 90s movie High Score. And he's done some behind-the-camera work in the 2000s. That's about all for good old Clayton. He just can't live up to, to Doogie. <laughs> when we come back from the opening credits, we're at the precinct the team is discussing. Tub says that he knows now that Lewis is gone. Ramon is going to fight with Lucia, her brother's widow, and her lame ass son, Carlos Jr., for the family business. Melissa, again with Tub's attire. Let's talk about the scarf. Is that a scarf? Is it a what is that? Is that a mascot? Is that I, what that is? I, I think it's a mascot that he's wearing as a tie. <laughs> he's he's breaking ba- boundaries with his <laughs> clothing. <laughs> Based on you how think Tubbs... it's a mascot, but Tubbs doesn't know exactly what a mascot is. Yes, I think that's exactly what it is. <laughs> There's a chance here. I thought throughout the entire episode, the way Tubbs is dressing, this might be a dream. <laughs> it, may, it may not be real. <laughs> <laughs> he dreams he dressed like that i'm very confused now castillo says that intelligence so. says that the demarcos are behind the shooting Fritex says the guns are south american so i guess maybe not the demarcos but either way lots of people want to see the pedros of family dead and the demarcos are top of the list yeah pretty much all we establish in this meeting is that Lu- lewis is kind of a pendejo yeah so pretty much. so and it could be anybody like- yeah, exactly. A lot of people wanted him dead. <laughs> In the locker room, Tubbs tells Sonny, I can't know it's tough seeing all those dead bodies today. Uh, maybe I see less than one if I was a doctor. I mentioned that, Dr. Tubbs. He would, those little, he's like, Tubbs. I love doctor. <laughs> That's what Crockett says, Dr. Tubbs, like as a joke. <laughs> Crockett laughs as they walk back to the desk. Phone rings. Tubbs answers. This is my favorite part. Tubbs answers and it's Caroline. She says, I, re- I really want to talk to Crockett. And Tubbs says, hey, you got the wrong line. Let me transfer you over to it. And he transfers the call instead of just handing Sonny the, the receiver. Yeah, he's like <laughs> literally transfers the call. They're like right across from each other. <laughs> also, he acts like he doesn't he's know. He's just showing off that he can work the phone system. Like, look what yeah. Trudy taught me how to do. <laughs> yeah, he acts like he doesn't know if Crockett's there. He's like, well, let me see if he's at his desk or not. I'm not sitting right across from him. <laughs> yeah. We don't rub our feet together occasionally when something when a case is really stressful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Caroline is calling up to tell him, like, hey, you need to come deal with your kid. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. Crockett tries to be like, no, nah, I'm really busy. No, nah, never mind. I'll go ahead and come out. Yeah, hell yeah, I'll be there. Like, he gets a little attitude with it. Oh, yeah. I'll be a dad for once. I guess just, you know, once in 14, 15. Well, there's Billy again. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it gets really interesting. Sonny goes in and talks to Castillo. Goes to the door. Castillo's like, oh, what's up? It's always something with you, isn't it, pretty boy? You always got <laughs> something going on. What is it this time? Crockett says... Well, and he kind of tells to like, like he kind of he, he kind of starts the conversation off like, hey, so it turns out I have a kid. You know, in <laughs> case you didn't him? know. <laughs> you remember him, yeah, don't you? Yeah. I haven't seen him in over a year, so I was thinking, kind of got to go out there. I guess he stole a car or something, knocked some chick up. I don't know. That's exactly what I was going to point out. So he tells Castillo he needs a couple of days off. He needs to go be with his son. And then he says, it's been more than a year. Let's rewind. Let's go back to all those lies he fed little Timmy while he was letting him drive the Ferrari out in the Everglades. And he was telling him, I'm always going to be here for you, son. You can always count on me. Now, we go forward a year. Yeah, I haven't seen my son in over 12 months. Um, He forgot he had one because he had amnesia, okay? <laughs> oh, excuses. He was too busy murdering people. He had a busy schedule. <laughs> he had a panther or whatever that was he had to feed. He was busy. <laughs> if you had amnesia, yeah, you'd forget about your kids, have, too. Yeah, I guess exactly have a safe environment for a kid, you know. True. Two points here. One, Sammy doesn't know that his dad's a murderer. He he can't know that yet, right? Like, even though it's probably all in the papers and everywhere, and then then court cases that were skipped and stuff like that, he has to know. Little Sammy doesn't know that. Two, Morris the Panther didn't do anything wrong. Morris the Panther was a good Panther. He took (laughs) took care of Sonny. He was always very curious. (laughs) Castillo says, I know you've had a lot to think about. You know, and Sonny says, well, I don't feel like I've really been pulling my weight for anybody. And Castillo's like, yeah, that's a good point. You should probably go for a couple of days. Yeah, but I like how he has to, like, yeah. prove it to Castillo he needs to go. Doesn't he have, like, vacation or well, something? Like, can he use up his days? Like, 
Well, to be honest, he kind of used his vacation up driving that granted motorcycle around the swamp. <laughs> True. Uh, banging bartenders. Kind of chose that one, that that vacation over uh, over his kid, you know. Yeah, so, I but, always um, thought like he was riding his motorcycle to go see his kid and he got like distracted. No, that's not what happened. He never meant to go see his kid. He was just trying to go get some ass. <laughs> <laughs> Waste that motorcycle on a kid. <laughs> and he could be slain bartender tail. <laughs> so now he's going to head out to Caroline's. And Sonny flies there. Didn't he drive there last time? Didn't they move closer so he could go see his son more often? Didn't little? Didn't he tell little Benny, you're going to see me more often. I know I haven't been much of a father. and now, But now that you live closer, and I know that I could just drive here, I'm going to come see you. But he flies. Where the fuck do they live now? I don't think he knows. <laughs> <laughs> Sonny knocks on the door. Papa Bob opens the door. Sonny in jeans and a leather jacket because he put his motorcycle in the, as a carry-on. <laughs> so they, <laughs> they took it with He rented him. one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and there's Papa Bob in his nice suit. Caroline comes down after Papa Bob says, like, hey, she's been sleeping in late, you know, she's and I'm with Sonny. The first thing I thought was like, is she an alcoholic? <laughs> what, what what's she into? Uh, he says she's sick, not if she's an alcoholic. He says she's she sick. Like or something? The party. <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. No, 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 no. My favorite part of this scene is his reaction to her being he's basically like pregnant again. That's why I left the first time. <laughs> Always pregnant. <laughs> yeah, we need to have a serious conversation about his his reaction. <laughs> Papa Bob. Papa Bob. <laughs> Bapa. Good old Bapa. <laughs> Papa Bob sees this as his cue to leave. Like, all right, you two have fun. I'm getting out of here. This is going to be awkward. I see you. Okay, so Papa Bob's not worried about him losing his wife or anything to Crockett, who's like 20 times better looking than him, shows up in a leather jacket and sunglasses. <laughs> Oh no, that's right. He's got money in his job. Because <laughs> someone has to bring money into this household. Yeah. Pay for all this stuff because no one else is paying for these kids' futures. <laughs> well, I mean, it's true. She does like Bob better. But like you said, Melissa, Sonny knows how to score Coke. So what's up? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Over tea, Caroline says that he's that little Timmy is always getting in trouble now. And Sonny says. Hey, is this real dad talk to him? I mean, shit. Has Bob talked to him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she says, well, that's part of the problem. He doesn't like Bob. Yeah, little Tommy doesn't seem to like Papa Bob very much. And also, this new baby is an accident. Well, for, no, no, let's go back here. He said, he asked her, did you did you talk to Billy about it before you got pregnant and, and tell him that the possibility? And she's like, well, it was an accident. And he goes, oh, my God, Caroline, we're not teenagers anymore. We understand how this works. Like, Wait, I can't we went to you. see Bob Seger. We had a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this coming from the man who, like, six months ago was murdering people because he wanted their drug money. But he can sit yeah. there and judge her, who's had the kid the whole time, who, who's been dealing with this kid, her, his kid, the entire time, taking care of him, doing everything. And he has the audacity to say... Hey, you stupid slut. You shouldn't have got pregnant, <laughs> even though you're married to a, in a stable relationship. And I have no wife because she's dead. Oh, she was pregnant, too. But, you know, she's dead. So <laughs> while he had amnesia, he had two women. Uh-huh. Plus Caitlin. Plus Caitlin. Plus then before then, uh -huh. like every few episodes, Sonny had some new floozy that he was. Yeah. Did he ask? Did he ask Billy's permission to get Caitlin pregnant because she was pregnant when she died? Oh, whoops. He doesn't know how to use birth control either. <laughs> And then well, I love because she snaps at him. She basically yeah. calls him a whore. So yeah. she, um, tells, she says all the stuff I said, like you go do drugs, you hang out with these people, you, you know, you go out all over the night and what all hours of the night, and I, I'm a bad person. And then he tries to, in in true man form here, he tries to blame it on the pregnancy hormones. He's like, you're hormonal. It's okay, you know, like mm -hmm. I didn't mean it like that. You're you're blowing this way out of proportion. Uh, no, I'm not. And I will say. <laughs> This, uh, especially the Bing Crockett going down the Carolines, it feels almost the youngest son in the movie Parenthood. How he brings like, hey, this is cool. Bye. Uh, my son, cool. Bye. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. like that's what Crockett kind of feels like now. He's got the leather jacket. He's kind of like, hey, how come Bob didn't talk to him? You know, like I've got stuff going in the city. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the cemetery, Indiana Tubbs is talking to Maria. <laughs> saying goodbye to her dead husband. <laughs> that hat. That's what you wear to a funeral. That is that is disrespectful to the dead. Wear that stupid hat. No, no. What is disrespectful to the dead is that they only bought the third biggest Virgin Mary statue that they could find. 
there are plenty <laughs> other big Virgin Mary statues in that cemetery that are bigger than that than the one they bought for their former mob boss. Who dressed Tubbs? Did they let him dress himself? Is that what happened here? Is that is that the same that person that, that dressed the widow? What the hell is she wearing on her head? <laughs> Looks like a bird's nest on her head. <laughs> Maria says that Lewis was a romantic for a customer, and now, <laughs> and now he's dead. Tubbs no is kissing like, on the mouth. It's extra. <laughs> Tubbs is like, hey, I like vulnerable, vulnerable women. Yeah. You're really vulnerable right now. He's like a dog sniffing around like, hey, you look like you could go have some sweaty sex with me. <laughs> so so re remember here, Lewis's wife is there talking to Cooper. So the Pedroza widow is talking to the person who's dealing drugs for the Pedroza family, like who's going to make the big buy for them and move it around, stuff like that. Ramon comes walking up. And he looks at Cooper and Maria and he says, I need to talk to Mr. Cooper alone. And he stares at Maria. It's like, if there was one person you wouldn't trust in this whole scenario. It's not Cooper. <laughs> yeah, it was, everyone, else, everyone else is a suspect except for this stranger I just met three weeks ago. Yeah. Who's helping me do yeah. deals. <laughs> yeah, he's all up in our yeah, business And he now pulls too. him aside. And he pulls him aside. Hey, so now that dad's gone, I need to figure out how to sell all these drugs. Like... You got any ideas? <laughs> he just angrily stares at Maria alone. And then he pulls Cooper away as if Maria is going to get like some inside information. As far as he knows, Maria is a mail order bride. She's a stupid peasant. They keep calling her that the yeah. whole, whole episode. So you would think that it would be reverse. He would walk up and say, I need to talk to Maria alone. He'd kick Cooper out so they could talk about family business. But no, it's the exact opposite. Hey, stranger, I don't know how to sell drugs. Can you help me out? Also, some random gang just murdered my father. I hope you weren't involved with that. No, you get the feeling through the whole <laughs> yeah. episode that they want Maria to go back home. They're like, okay, so it didn't work out. You know, your husband's dead. We don't need you here uh -huh. anymore. <laughs> when are you going to go home? <laughs> Someone come and get you. No, no returns. <laughs> Right. No returns. Any up front. No refunds. Okay. <laughs> speak with my supervisor. <laughs> so uh, not only does he ask Tubbs to sell his drugs for him, he also asks him to go meet with his competitor's muscle, who could have possibly killed his father, and convince them to come work for him. Yeah, they're gonna you got that too, you know. Cooper, please take care of all of this. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So Tubbs now is going to go meet with this man named Tony, who works for the DeMarcos, who they think is who killed Lewis. And he's going to give Tony an offer he can't refuse, which is not kill him but hey we'll pay you a lot of money to come work for no, us no it's really an offer not, yeah. not <laughs> they're alone in the restaurant cooper leans forward and says uh, that pedroza families want to make peace and they're willing to pay for it and then suddenly grandma <laughs> <laughs> granny hitman <laughs> she's like she belonged in golden girls or something <laughs> yeah b arthur attacks him with a semi-automatic <laughs> It's a Stel Getty. It's got to be Sophia. So it's a Stel Getty with that wig. <laughs> <laughs> she kills Tony. Cooper kills her. So he survives and he's angry. Now Tubbs foaming at the mouth. Bitch slapping Tubbs is going to make a comeback. He goes straight over to Ramones. Storms in and he says, you set me up. Ramones like, hey, whoa. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. Got me. I did. Yeah. <laughs> but you didn't die. So Dude, okay. he's totally like, yeah, he's like, he's totally like, I can explain. Like, she was supposed to kill you, too. He completely admits to it, just caves. Like, yeah, yeah, she was totally supposed to kill you. I'm sorry, man. That wasn't cool. <laughs> Ramon says, I'm, I'll make it up to you. You're in charge of this whole deal. You're going to do the whole thing. I'm going to pay you an extra $100,000, and I'm not going to keep any more secrets from you. Because <laughs> I've been keeping a lot. I lives. promise I'll never lie to you again. <laughs> Come to my party. I promise there'll be no, there won't be any old ladies there trying to kill you. I swear to God. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Atlanta, maybe I'm, I'm gonna start guessing where they live. No, it's still in. I think they're still in Pittsburgh, oh, Florida, <laughs> either Pittsburgh Florida. or somewhere in Ohio. Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Meanwhile, meanwhile in Cleveland, Sonny and Robbie are walking and talking on the street. Little Danny, he's complaining about how it's all Mom and Papa Bob, and all they talk about is the baby this and the baby that. And Papa Bob is always riding me, telling me what I can and can't do. Like go to these scary movies because I'm like a little baby boy, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. And I walked into their room one time, and Papa Bob was wrestling with Mom. <laughs> 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 and he had her in a hold. <laughs> Sunny says, 
your mom and your real dad love you and they want what's best for you and you have a pretty good life right like you have it's much better than what i can give you You're true happy with what you got dude dude this is so brutal freaking his kids like like bob sucks he's not my real dad and without me missing a beat croc is like oh timmy you can't come live with me i'm an absentee <laughs> father i'm not even mature enough to care for a house plant let alone a kid <laughs> I, I lost used to have a panther. Allig- I mean, come on. I was going to say, I lost my alligator. <laughs> He's gone. I don't even know what happened to him. He got tired of me neglecting him and just went off. <laughs> yeah, just totally gives him the most BS excuse to like, hey, you can't come stay with me. Like, dad, be crazy. I mean, it's almost like I'm your dad. Little Jimmy says, great. Now you're playing on their side, too. I, everyone's against me. You don't even want me. He says, you don't want me. Like, they don't want me around, and you don't want me around. No one wants me. It's like, ouch, he's kind of got a point. No one does want him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And we get a quick scene where Crockett stops by and tells Caroline, hey, kind of made things worse. Good luck with that. <laughs> Let's eat these sandwiches together, though. <laughs> Quick stop at the Pedroza Mansion. Carlos Jr. is watching Maria swim. I guess with his aunt watching her swim. Well, see, it tells him that you're a loser. This should be you should be running this whole thing. Carlos Jr. is like, I don't want to die. Yeah, he's like, my dad. He said your she, he said your father ran the whole company. He goes, yeah, and he died for it. I don't want to die. He's like, you're not a man. Man, she's a tough mom. <laughs> but we jump to the most awesome party. Minus the fact that it is a crap load of white people and tubs and Maria. <laughs> true like they just party all through the day through the night even ramon's aunt dies and they're like like nothing to see back to the party <laughs> tubs comes walking in he's like i smell a vulnerable woman yeah he finds her right away maria i see you over there he comes over sees lucia go up to ramon and and yell at him about inviting his demarcos the the, the demarcos to the party she slaps him. I'm sorry. Ramon slaps her and then tells Carlos Jr. to get her out of here. Tubbs and Maria are like, hey, I'm not a cop. Listen, we should get out of here. I don't need to watch any of this. Yeah, exactly. She's like, I need some <laughs> fresh air. He's like, yeah, I do too. Like, I'm, I don't really need to be here. I'm not undercover. Like, I shouldn't be a part of this. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, at Caroline's, Caroline and Sonia were reminiscing about, hey, remember when we were married? And then they get a call and little Bobby got in a fight and then ran away. So I don't know where he is right now. Yeah, this is sitting there like, memories. Talking about, you remember that time? That time he got the poops and we were up for three days. <laughs> <laughs> and then they get the call and Tom almost gets bad. Damn it, Joey. We were just starting to have fun. So Sonny's pretty sure he knows where little Sammy is. He's probably out watching a horror movie, which is what he's supposed to be doing. Discuss the fact that he finds him. But he's already got popcorn. So Sonny went and got popcorn <laughs> before he found his kid. He was like, oh, whatever. I'll find him. He's here somewhere. They talk and they agree that it's weird that Caroline's having a baby. But little Willie. It's also said, weird that this Willie. theater is practically empty. <laughs> I know. It's a huge movie theater. He's watching too. Frankenstein. Yeah. Watching. Yeah. And little Willie's like, I don't want the baby to come. I don't like where this is going. And Sonny says, it's okay. I had an older brother, too, who basically raised me. And he would pummel people in drainage ditches. <laughs> he would <laughs> murder people. <laughs> He's like, Dude, push that uh, kid's face in the mud and he died. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> Jimmy Venucci didn't die. Now, Jimmy <laughs> Venucci is in prison on some completely unrelated stuff Rocket might, may or may not have been involved in. <laughs> Notice this is the first time he's ever talked about a brother. Notice you've never seen his parents or his brother. Nope. Yes. Sonny's pitch here is that you'll get to be way older, so that means you get to be an amazing pick for your brother. And little Terry says, no, nah, no thanks. And Sonny says, well, can you at least be nice to your mom? Yeah, because I'm not. <laughs> I already accused her of being a whore and getting knocked up. Today's been a bad day for her. Maybe you should be good. At the Pedroza Mansion, Cooper Pardon. and Maria are dancing. Uh huh. That's what you call that. Party's still going. <laughs> Party time, y'all. Cooper says. Oh God, yes. Quote: You're a tender lady. <laughs> She's been tenderized. <laughs> She's like a slab of meat. She's gonna, <laughs> been, he's gonna do so many hours. sweaty things to her. <laughs> Such sweaty things. <laughs> He's like he's been pushing on her, like t- tenderizing her all night, like working her over. <laughs> Some of those other she women are kind of talking about how she misses Columbia, <laughs> how, how Miami's a shit. <laughs> she tells him he kind of reminds her, her dad, 
and then which is creepy and then <laughs> asked him to yeah and then she wants to kiss him you know creep like like that creepy kiss she got from her fiance at the wedding i think she's just in the old guys Tubbs, <laughs> you might look a little old man <laughs> she leaves after saying i can't we have to you know court i'm old-fashioned <laughs> sorry <laughs> from a distance lucia sees what's happening but then, you know, five minutes later, you hear a woman scream. Tubbs comes running over. Maria pops up from around the corner. As she wasn't the crowd there. <laughs> yeah. Builds. You see that Carlos Jr. is Carlos. over Lucia. Lucia is dead, and now he's pissed. He jumps up and blames Ramon, punches him. So he's going to kill Ramon. The guards carry Carl. Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you say it, and you, it sounds like you're saying Carl Jr. <laughs> the, gar- the guards carry Carl Jr. away. <laughs> uh, basically, he yells, quick, someone killed Ma. And then Ramon comes <laughs> over and says, ah, nah, nah. Back to the party, everyone. No one cares about her. <laughs> yeah, he's like, clean up this mess, basically. <laughs> and the party keeps going. Because that's what an awesome party does. At the precinct the next day, Tubbs is telling the team what Ramon wants him to do, but also says that Ramon is the only one that would probably kill his dad to take over control of the family. So there's a possibility here that Ramon is actually the one behind the trigger. Gina oh, yeah. Says, and dad, is there any way we can protect the widow until I hit that? You know, <laughs> just, just a little, like a week or so until I nail that. Tubbs says that he feels confident that the deal will go down, that they'll be able to bring down Ramon because he's the only one he can trust. Question. I don't know where your logic here is on this, Tubbs. He's pretty much willing to kill anyone and everyone uh, yeah. for control of the family. Also, you're a stranger. Yeah, did you forget about the old lady his- trying to kill him? Yeah, I mean, there's lots here to suggest that Ramon is setting Tubbs up because he's this connection man, and you're also a stranger that appeared randomly before my father was killed. So it's just kind of a coincidence, I guess. <laughs> and then Castillo says, "No, I will not protect the widow." Also, are you like getting personal with the widow? And Tubbs like, "No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I swear, to no, no." <laughs> And dad's like, good. Because that's what I do. All right. <laughs> that's what everyone else does in this place. Now, off to the big deal, which is the weirdest deal. Because Tubbs comes in and flashes the briefcase. Here, here's like 10% down. Now, give me the Coke. You realize you could pay in installments. I also didn't realize that Cooper was going to buy drugs from Ramon. I got pretty, so confused. <laughs> I thought he was going to steal drugs. I- Yes. For Ramon, Ramon, not from him. <laughs> that whole thing was not very exactly confusing. sure what's going on. But the high school drama club shows up and starts shooting at him again. Ramon and Cooper escape together. Slow motion style. Get out of there. Before the building has a chance to blow, but it doesn't. <laughs> Back at Ramon's, when they come I in. Swear. That night, I show up every time they try and do drug stuff. <laughs> Maria sees Cooper and Ramon come in. Ramon leaves angry. And Maria invites Mr. Cooper upstairs. Mr. Cooper? Is that what she calls him? <laughs> Mr. Cooper. Oh, Thanks. Mr. Cooper, let me bathe you. Yeah, some weird ass crap going on. <laughs> Things get pretty personal pretty fast. Tubbs with his shirt off. Maria says she can't stand it if anything happens to him. Then it becomes foot Tell rubbing time. Sweaty, <laughs> sweaty things. <laughs> Tubbs is going to get nice and sweaty and just grease her up real good. <laughs> oh, oh, man. It's about to get moist in here. <laughs> Post coital <like>, bedroom. <laughs> Cooper is leaving. Tells Maria. She doesn't look very satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> I, think she, uh, I, I think she regrets things. He says, stay here. Don't leave. You're safe in this room. He, <laughs> he leaves. She immediately leaves. Goes up to Carlos Jr. Up to see Carlos Jr. They embrace. You realize oh, wait, now. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I wasn't too sure on this because it almost looked like Carlos Jr. was like watching from a closet. Like she didn't seem to go very far to see him. I, 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 I'm just saying, there's a possibility Carlos Jr. just watched that whole interaction get down. Ramon is downstairs. So after Maria goes and sees Carlos Jr., he goes downstairs. He Ramon's like, hey, let, come have a drink with me. Carl Jr. says, no way. You're dirty. I don't like you. I'm taking over the family. You killed my mother. Okay, and Maria bro. says, do it. Do it. Do it, you chump pussy come on pull this trigger do it already ramon uh-huh. tries to talk his way out of it then dives for his gun carl jr shoots and kills ramon maria says nice work goes down gets ramon's gun shoots and kills carl jr carl jr always dying says why 
And she says, because you're a Pedroza. So now we know she's also, you're a winning everything. <laughs> she's the one that's behind all these murders. She's the one that's playing everyone as suckers, including Cooper, who fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. She was tender. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I have seen this style takeover before. This is exactly how Evil Crockett took over yep. the last cartel. <laughs> Melissa, to her credit, also said while she was watching the episode, and I said, oh, hey, I, we're never going to see a backstory on any of this, right? Like, we're going to go through the whole episode and not know where this comes from. And then suddenly, bomb surprise, like, you know. It's, it's, it's going to be this her, random thing. Yeah. And Melissa says, well, I mean, her dad is dead and she used tubs like a cheap flip flop. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those ones, they break real easy. You get them at the dollar store, wear them once, they fall apart, uh-huh. you throw them away. <laughs> so the now we start to piece things together and, and we end up at the morgue. And I don't think the mortician's very good at his job because he's like, Hey, you guys need to see this 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 symbol, this tattoo-like thing by his ear. You know this tattoo. <laughs> Castillo knows all about it too. The scorpions, but I'm going to try and say what it is in Spanish. But the scorpions, they're a ruthless gang. Scorpionistas. In Dad looks at the case file, sees that's the same gun that killed Lewis. So like. Clearly, the two hits were exactly the same people, and now we know that they're all part of the Scorpions gang. He leaves from there and immediately goes to this restaurant because he knows where Guerrero, the mail order pimp, where he's having lunch. He flashes his badge and says, I want to know where you got Maria. He's like, I don't divulge any of that information. He's like, what if I call INS? Like, oh, we got her from this one town. (laughs) Right away. He's like, well, yeah, you put it that way. She came up to me. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, believe it or not, she paid me to marry him. Who'd have thunk it? That ugly <laughs> son of a gun. <laughs> Says that they were very insistent it'd be Maria. She's a part of some big family called the Scorpions. I don't know how, why, I don't know anything about that. That's a just a weird coincidence that she that this one gang in Colombia insisted that she be the one that goes with the Pedroza family. So we, we learned this. We jump. We have a quick scene where Crockett pro- promises uh St- stevie that if he's good he'll do dad stuff with him then we <laughs> jump back <laughs> end of danny storyline like that's <laughs> we're at the end of it he'll never be, be good no <laughs> <laughs> kidding <laughs> be good and do dad stuff with you if you're not good i'm not showing up for another year <laughs> you're sitting here with papa bob deal with it yep so now out at the Pedrozas, Cooper walks in on Maria taking a shower. Tubbs doesn't know about the scorpion stuff yet, though. Castillo was the one that figured that out. He says that she's in a lot of danger. He wants her to leave right now. She comes out, says, no matter what happens, know that I love you. Oh, really quickly, you know. Mm-hmm. And then Tubbs sees I also her know that tattoo. she's not getting dressed. Tubbs sees her tattoos, her tattoo, and puts it all together and asks, why did you do it? And she says, well, the Pedrozas came when I was a little girl, talking oh, to no, my dad. Oh, no, I've got the backstory. I've got the backstory. Because obviously, you know, when you when you feed us this entire backstory of why she would do all of this in the last two minutes of the episode, it's got to be good. So it turns out her last name is Ortega. She's an heiress of the Chili. Uh, <laughs> the people that make the Ortega Chili. Yeah, yeah. She has all that Chili money. And so... <laughs> she got hot sauce money. <laughs> she, but the Pendroza is threatening that. So she said, I'll go to America and marry him and kill the whole family so they can't have any of our chili money. <laughs> See? And that's why the whole episode happened. It can't be as simple as a drug deal went bad and killed her father. And then she went on a revenge uh, escapade across America to go. No, because then that wouldn't make her revenge. She should have. Like, how, how do you say that? Like the, the, her revenge was uh needed not needed but like you should she should do it it's morally right for her to do it this way her dad was killed because he refused to work with mm-hmm. with the, the the drug dealers mm-hmm. and then he was being tortured and the mother went in there to stop the torture and she was murdered so these people murdered her whole family so this is this is actually acceptable what she's doing which by the way i think is totally acceptable uh, except for seducing tubs i think my backstory is way better <laughs> she's a chili heiress <laughs> she also made taco products I'm with John. I mean, if they're going to drop this, they're going to sum up her entire backstory in 37 seconds because in comes Miguel, says that Cooper is the only one that could have tipped them off to the cops. Quick shoot exchange and 
Maria, Miguel, and the other person are all dead. And this all whole thinks it's sto- dead. <laughs> not only are all of the Scorpions dead that are responsible for killing the Pedrosas, but also all of the Pedrosas are dead. So we literally do not have any evidence that this story ever existed <laughs> by this time we yeah, get no. to yes. the end of it, including Sonny's relationship with his son. This episode did not exist. <laughs> <laughs> it was a dream, yes. except for though, the outfits. <laughs> But it, if they're going to save it, it was all about South American chili wars. <laughs> but if they were going to save it for a 37 second description on why Maria was going to get revenge, a little bit more work than other than they tortured my dad and killed my mom. Like, that would have been amazing. Like, we were the first family in South America to figure out how to make fried tortillas and ship them in boxes to the United States. And now they're trying to threaten our business. We even made the white ones yes. that stand up on their own. <laughs> I think her yes. dad made the flaming hot Cheetos. <laughs> he wouldn't give him the Cheeto recipe. That's how he ended up dead. <laughs> so now we go to the St. Midas. We're at the last scene of the episode. Tubbs and Sonny are fishing. Tubbs says, I know I'm a chump for getting involved, but I just can't stop chumping. <laughs> I keep chumping around. <laughs> Sonny says, Caroline is having another baby and that Caroline is the one that got away. Yeah, and, and I like how Tubbs goes, well, that's nice for her. <laughs> like, it's Caroline's fault that Crockett can't get his shit together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he's saying it's nice that she got away. Good for her. Tubbs says, I'm not giving up. I'm looking for a woman that's not connected to the business and will love me for being me and won't have a job and will stay home. Sonny's like, yeah, then we'll live in the suburbs with a white picket fence and a Winnebago. And they both stop, look at each other. Nah. Nah, we like those drug whores. <laughs> uh-huh. And then that's the end of the episode. On its own, this is a good episode. If you ignore that literally they they murdered everyone at the end of the episode so that these storylines will never appear again. And I would yeah. totally believe that little Benny will never make another appearance in the rest of the show, too. Yes. So, I mean, I get why the Crockett storylines in there. His little brothers on the better things because doogie does the stuff with his life all we know bobby ends up in prison you almost get to feel like the other storyline the pendroza storyline or something it almost has like a hamlet feel to it where where everyone ends up dead except nobody in there gets to be i mean i guess is tub supposed to be hamlet it's almost shakespearean except it forgot the main part i don't know what the payoff is here and and i'll save it for my final thoughts but i i I agree with you like they needed to talk about little louie but because they haven't done it in a long time they kind of promised in season four that they would talk about him more and then they didn't but i think Mm. the storyline would have been better if sunny was in the pedroza story yeah but they're setting it up because little yeah Tommy comes back. Mm, gotcha. He does come back. There's more episodes, and that whole we're gonna you're gonna spend that, a month with me on in summer. Okay. Okay. I feel does, better. Does that ex- explain how he he gets led down the the road of crime? <laughs> <laughs> also, like as a mom, why would you ever let your kid go spend a, a month with Sunny? Son, this is how you become a drug mule. Yeah. Like why? <laughs> <laughs> now practice swallowing these balloons. <laughs> Don't touch anything at your dad's house. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got lots more thoughts about this. He used to have panther. He made me give it up. <laughs> I got lots more thoughts about this episode and um, not to say how it ended, but just like the build up to the ending. But before we get there, let's talk about this week's music and let's see if the trend is continuing on the ever budget conscious spice when it comes to music. Let's go take a look at this week's music. All right, John, did a sneak peek, and I recognize the names, but they may not have appeared a while in Vice or if not ever, because I, I can't put my finger on the history. What do you got for us this week? We have a bit, a little bit of a, a music repeat in that we have Brian Ferry showing up for his final time with B- uh, Beth Noré, and he he's appeared in our music with Windswept in the episode Prodigal Son, it, with the song Slave to Love in the episode Junk Love, and the song Boys and Girls in the episode Bashudo. So this is his fourth and final ep- appearance, guys. I mean, we're just wrapping everything up. And you might remember, he is the English singer-songwriter who is also the lead man in the Roxy Music Band a few times, like three times he was in that band. He also had a pretty successful solo career for a number of years. I have literally talked about him a ton, uh, a bunch. So 
trying to find things that I haven't talked about. Let's talk a little bit about his personal life. Oh, this should be good. <laughs> yeah. So he dated Amanda Lear in the early 70s. After breaking up with her, he would start a relationship with Jerry Hall. And if you recognize that name, that is because in 1977, they broke up when she left him for Mick Jagger. Oh, I remember that. I do know that he, she was with Mick Jagger. She was, mar- was she married to Mick Jagger or she just dated him? Uh, yes. I, I believe Jerry Hall actually married him. That's my thing. positive, so. though. So she left him for Mick Jagger and actually wrote a tell-all book about it. And in fact, there's a fan theory out there that Brian Ferry's song Kiss and Tell from this album, Bet Noray, 1987, is a response to that tell-all book that Jerry Hall wrote. So I haven't read the book, but I'm sure she said all kinds of wonderful stuff about how, you know, got a small package. <laughs> I was going to say, he's got a small penis. <laughs> cries after sex. <laughs> yeah. So he would go from there, and in the early 80s, he would decide to do the creepy old man thing, and he would marry Lucy Helmore, 14 years his junior. They actually stay married for quite a long time. They they would be married all the way until 2003, and they would have four sons. Now, guys, I understand why some people hate their parents. <laughs> so his his names are Otis, Otis Ferry, Pit Ferry, Terry, uh, Tara Ferry. <laughs> oh, he say Terry Ferry. <laughs> and my favorite, Merlin Ferry. <laughs> His parents named him Merlin Fairy. Merlin, as in the wizard. <laughs> fairy. Uh, by the way, Otis is a pro hunting douchebag who got in trouble for some bullshit. Uh, Tara in a rock band with an awesome name called Rubber Kiss Goodbye. And Merlin Fairy, aside from being in college, was also in a band called Volt Orb, which actually almost kind of sounds magical. So maybe he's. Maybe he's into the Merlin name. <laughs> so after his divorce in 2003 from Merlin's mother, uh, he, he'd take a break, he would date a little bit, and in 2012, he would marry Amanda Shepard, who was 37 years his junior, and <laughs> his son Isaac's ex-girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> yeah, kind of weird, huh? Kind of yeah, makes things give kind of awkward. Then that's just a little bit about his personal life. Brian Ferry is also very politically active and a bunch of stuff I touched on and a few of the other musics. So, but we are going to bid him adieu. And Merlin, I'm sorry uh, your parents named you that. <laughs> <laughs> Our second artist is also a repeat. It is Chris DeBerg, who sings Carry Me. He appeared... In the episode, Everybody's in Show Business, with the only three songs in the episode, The Leader, The Vision, and What About Me. Pretty much, we did a deep dive all about him, because he was the only one in music that day. (laughs) Uh, Revisit him a little bit. Kirstenberg, known as art rock performer, who also writes pop music. So, at least that's what Wikipedia says he is. (laughs) Uh, He has several top 40 UK hits, only two US hits but was way more popular in places like Norway and Brazil. In fact, if you live in Norway, you, you, you can't not have grown up with a Chris DeBerg poster on your wall. <laughs> one of his two U.S. hits, and probably one of his most notable hits, is uh, his 1986 hit love song, The Lady in Red. And if you're like me, you're singing that song in your head. <laughs> He's actually sold over 45 million albums worldwide. I would be so curious as to how that actually translates into money, being as I'm not exactly sure what the current exchange rate in Norway or Brazil is. I'm just curious, like, like much are his albums actually sold there? Like, are they like 300 Vikings or whatever they use in Norway? I don't know. 300 goats, you know, or, or you know, is that like $2 American or is that like twelve fifty? Like, is it like the same amount if I bought it at a Sam Goody? Just like, you know, a lot of people are going to listen to this. What the hell is a Sam Goody? Uh, he got his first record contract in 1974. Built up uh, support, supporting Super Tramp on their Crime of the Century tour. Thank you, Super Tramp, for giving us Chris the Berg. <laughs> Norway and Brazil, thank you. Let's talk a little bit about his personal life because, well, we already did a deep dive and I kind of want to just talk about his daughter, Rosanna. So we'll get to her. 
He married his <laughs> wife, Diana, in 1977. They have three kids together, sons, Hubby and Michael. Hubby the bird, guys. <laughs> Hubby. But no one cares about them. Let's talk about his daughter, Rosanna. Rosanna won the 2003 Miss World competition representing Ireland. She's, it's actually the first time Ireland has ever won the Miss World competition. Also an accomplished writer, she's written two best-selling books, Eat Yourself Fit and Eat Yourself Beautiful, which I'm amazed is not the same book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious if it is picture and or pop-up books. I appreciate I that we're also all, all surprised by like an Irish person won <laughs> yeah. Miss World. What? <laughs> I mean, I, I would suspect any other country could win it, but <laughs> Ireland? <laughs> uh, yeah, so pop-up books aside, <laughs> in 2012, she was also the first Irish woman to appear topless on the cover of Playboy. Big well, accomplishment she's got that going. there. <laughs> just more yeah. evidence that they're just not as lookers from Ireland. Right. She the, <laughs> she's the first and only representative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It explains why books are such good, so are, are best sellers because Irish people need to eat themselves fit, apparently. <laughs> Maybe even eat themselves beautiful. And if you would like to know more about Rosetta de Berg, she has like a degree as a nutritionist and she goes around and does conferences and, and speaks and stuff. And apparently she's going to write another book, Eat Yourself Something. I don't know. She hasn't announced the title yet, but I'm sure it's going to start with Eat Yourself Somewhere. <laughs> and there she be. I knew I recognized the names. I remember some of the history of these people that were in music, but I'm also not surprised that they're repeats. Yeah, you know, part of that package deal, you know, where they had people come in like Brian Ferry and do like eight songs. <laughs> so let's go wrap this one <laughs> up and give our final thought. All right, I'm awesome. Why don't you kick us off this week on what your final thoughts are on this episode? Give us some context here of Miami Vice. Like I said, it, by the end of it, it kind of seemed like it didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't happen. It was a dream. <laughs> I think this episode, I mean, it's a good episode. It's, I, I don't know what anyone's wearing in it. I want to know like what the thought process was. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, it proves that Tubbs and Crockett are not meant to be happy, right? They're not meant to have relationships with people because Tubbs really liked her. He was really, he, she was really tender. <laughs> he could, he could, it didn't Tubbs work out. Tubbs has terrible taste. This is like the fourth one that's tried to kill him. They are bad with women. Let's just face it. No, I mean, it, it, this, this episode does matter in the concept of Billy because his name is Billy. <laughs> <laughs> it, he will come back. It does come back. That story comes back that her having the baby and all that. I think I think they he, she actually has the baby. And he comes and stays or something. I think what happens is like I'm, I'm not. I can't really remember like all of it, but I think it it's gonna be like it's gonna be at the end of this show. So like the turning point of Crockett being like, do I really want to do this anymore? Because like I might actually want to have my son come live with me. Do I want to really be a dad or do I want to continue to you know do drug <laughs> do drugs <laughs> to sell drugs? Not he doesn't do them. He just sells them. So yeah, I mean it's an important story. It's kind of a, I don't know. There's not a lot that happens in this episode though. For being what it's supposed to be, it did not, not a lot actually happens other than Tub having Tubs having sex with some lady and Crockett pretending to be a dad for a weekend or a day. I don't know. <laughs> This follows typical vice pattern where we get introduced to a dealer, a millionaire drug dealer who the vice have been tracking for quite some time. And then by the end of it, they killed the entire family that we don't have to deal with that drug dealer anymore. So I was harping on it a little bit at the end of the episode, but this is vice. This is what they do. Not surprising at all that at the end of them, all of the pedrosas are dead. And also the woman who was sabotaging them to murder the entire family is dead too, because we're just going to move on. We're not going to, especially in season five, we're not going to have a continuation of a storyline. We only have 11 episodes to go. And two of those include Lombard and then Freefall, where we sum er everything up. Uh, and then the Lost Ones, which get funky. We don't have that ma many episodes. We can't have anything that's going to continue on. I do believe that the Dougie portion of the show is on purpose. But I also think it's because Don Johnson's time was limited. And you can tell that he filmed all of his stuff in a single day because, one, his scenes total together about like seven minutes worth of actual on-screen time. Two, he never changes his clothes. 
he's wearing the same clothes throughout the entire episode. And exactly. so exactly he he was on a limited schedule, which is why he's not part of the Pedroza storyline and why Tubbs is kind of by himself on this. We always love the episodes that involve all of the Vice team. No Trudy, no Gina, no Stan, hardly any Castilla. I mean, they make appearances. Trudy makes her only appearance in the morgue. So, I mean, really, like, we're really light. This is really a Tubbs episode, and it's good. It's a it's a rubber stamp episode of Miami Vice. They find a drug dealer. They infiltrate the drug dealer. The entire drug dealer family gets murdered. We move on with our lives. But you just feel like it's season five. We're not going to continue any storylines. Uh, Don Johnson's really busy outside of Miami Vice, so he's only going to be here for a short period of time to do his filming. And let's make sure we get the Dilly storyline in there. That way it's ready to go for when we get to, to the end of the show. John, what, what are your final thoughts? I'm with you on that this is Vice style. Start a cartel and cartel within the uh, single episode. And it kind of reminds me of, of shows like Chicago Fire, where it's like, there can't be an actual fire every day. If you actually went hung out at a fire station, you would realize that they maybe fight, fight three or four fires a year. Mostly what they're doing is going out to calls, that medical calls. Um, someone's, an old person's having a heart attack. As far as TV goes, it's like there's a fire every week. And then that fire gets put out. And then the next week, there's a brand new fire or arsonist or whatever they're searching for. I, I think that, you know, after five years, we're kind of in that same like you said, like we're wrapping up and we're kind of in that same boat where we're going to do cartel, brand new cartel storyline beginning to end. But I also think that this is kind of why we're getting toward, toward the end of the show is that we're starting, it's everything's starting to feel similar to other episodes earlier in the show. Like I alluded, like the plan that Maria had in this was basically Crockett's plan from when he had amnesia. And so it, it's almost like they're just taking... It's a plot from all of the other, a lot of the other episodes we've already seen. And then the other story arc that was in it was the Billy one, which, you know, like you said, proved that Crockett three days off to spend whopping two and a half hours with his kid. <laughs> I'm getting anxious, guys. I'm getting nervous. The closer we get to these uh, lost episodes and the final episode... I, I keep waiting for another amnesia arc to start up or another evil crocket arc or something. It didn't feel like that that in a kid. It just kind of feels like it's just going to kind of stop. So it's going to be like Vice episode, regular Vice episode. We'll probably throw a goofy episode in and then last episode. Yeah, I think, John, I think we're in agreement in w what this is. That this is when Vice is good. This is this type types of storyline that they do. Just in this episode, there's nothing memorable. Like, you don't, the bad guy is in... in particularly bad maria twist isn't necessarily that surprising dubs doesn't do some stellar police work or anything in fact he gets duped the entire time and gets lucky at the end that castillo's able to save his ass i would like a little bit something a little more exotic for music i mean i'm not talking about western soundtracks but <laughs> i mean give me something other than brian ferry so <laughs> is it weird that i kind of hope merlin ferry ends up with rosanna de <laughs> On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us this week on Go With The Heat. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We would love to hear from you. Email us, goalwiththeheat at gmail.com, facebook.com slash goalwiththeheat, twitter.com slash goalwiththeheat, instagram.com slash goalwiththeheat. You see what I'm getting at here? It's all at Go With The Heat. How about goalwiththeheat.com? You check out that website. You see the support page. You can find all those links where you can find out how you can get in contact with us. You can find that Patreon link. You can find all the other places on the internet like Tune in, Pocket Cast, iTunes, wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find links to be able to find all those things. Did you also know, and it's the holiday season, everyone's getting smart speakers. Did you know that you can just say, hey, insert smart speaker, play the latest Go With The Heat podcast or play the latest Miami Vice podcast? Watch. You can find us anywhere and everywhere you want to listen to podcasts. You can find all the information on the website. We would love to see your support. Support step number one. Email us. Go with the heat at gmail.com. Let us know what you think about this episode and what you think about Maria as the villain in this episode. Maybe we're barking up the wrong tree about kind of, you know, being generic on this one. Support step number two. Leave us a review on your podcast, your platform of choice. Preferably iTunes if you listen to us there. Give us five stars. No one will ever know that I asked you to give us five stars, but go ahead and give us five stars. But don't write a review. No one ever reads the reviews. Instead, I want you to give some recommendations on how Tubbs could have dressed better in this episode. <laughs> and maybe describe to him what an ascot is. <laughs> 
or also write some fan fiction about how Merlin Fairy <laughs> about his journey to discover the Volt Orb and save <laughs> Princess Rosanna de Berg, the first Irish woman. <laughs> <laughs> To get nude. <laughs> Support step number three. We all we're kind of putting our hat out there. Like, hey, you enjoyed the show? Might want to kick in a couple of bucks. That we're passing the collection plate around. So if you want to put in a couple of bucks, check out that Patreon, patreon.com slash go with the heat. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see y'all next time. Bye, pals. Bye.